everyone. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've last made a Minecraft tutorial or even posted a video, but fear not, I'll be back for the foreseeable future. I'll have some more information in the description because I know 99.6% uh, of people don't care about it. Uh, wink wink. But anyways, on to the tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at uh, four different reactor designs. The basic reactor, which is just put in uranium, get power. The fluid reactor, which is a little more complicated than that. Basically requires heat from the uranium rods, and you have to process it with this big setup. And then we're going to be looking at a better way, in my opinion. More efficient, but also more dangerous way of doing the default reactor. Using MOX fuel rods. And the last one is going to be just a plutonium farm, basically. You're not doing it for power, you're doing it for plutonium, which is used to make MOX fuel rods. So let's get right into it. The way every single nuclear reactor works is there's an inventory in here. You place the block down, the actual block. These are reactor chambers you can see in the top. And that starts you with three slots, I believe. Each reactor chamber you add gives you an additional slot. And then this lever is, you can put it on any of these blocks, used to turn off the reactor on and off. And in here, you're going to put your fuel and also your cooling components, which you don't want your reactor to overheat because then it'll blow up and uh, it's not good. So here are all the components. Now, this may look pretty daunting, but uh, most of these are pretty useless. So these are uranium rods. You can see I've put some notes in for myself. But yeah, these are uranium rods. These are your basic fuel. We're going to use them in this basic reactor. 5U for heat. Now, all of these notes are per tick. So 5U per tick, if you don't know what ticks are, there's 20 of them per second. So basically, 5U times 20, that is 100 a tick or a second. And what that means is every tick, it's going to produce 5U. You can just siphon it off with the wires into a storage block. But every tick, it's also going to produce for heat. But we have these vents. These are the main things. These five vents here. These are the main things you're going to use to dissipate heat. I can give you a little demonstration here. This generates four heat a second. This dissipates six heat a second from itself. And it absorbs heat from only components it's next to. So we should be generating four heat and dissipating six heat. So it should not overheat at all. And you can see this stays at a thousand. Basically what that durability means is if it's getting like say 7 heat, it would lose 1 durability a second because it's that's a basically a heat meter. Once it gets down to 0, it gets destroyed and you don't want that. And these also have durability. They, they lose 1 a second, I think. And when that's gone, they get destroyed so you can't use this infinitely, which makes sense. But that's the basic premise of this. You make power, but you also make heat. These 6 are power. The rest are for heat. This is just an upgrade. It, He's crafted with diamonds, I believe, so it's pretty expensive, but it doubles, basically. So you have four of them around. You can get 48 heat a second, which is really good. This dissipates five heat from the reactor. Basically, this can work anywhere in the reactor because it dissipates from the actual reactor. Even if it's not next to a rod, and the heat will go into the reactor and then get dissipated by this. This is an interesting one. In my opinion, it's the best one. It's an upgrade to this. It dissipates... 20 heat per second but it takes in 36 heat a second from the reactor so basically what that means is by default it will destroy itself so you're gonna have to cool it with either by making more of these or just putting four of these around because this dissipates four heat from each component by component we mean everything that's not fuel rods and that is going to dissipate four heat a second from this so if we have four of those around it'll dissipate 16 and that is exactly the amount of excess, so that's the most common strategy for dealing with that. These six, these things here, all useless, I'll talk about them real quick. I've never really seen anyone use these. These are coolant cells, they do not do anything really, except just provide a buffer of heat. So basically it'll absorb heat, it won't dissipate any, unless there's a vent next to it that dissipates it for it. These are really useless, like, there's no reason to have a bigger buffer. If you're not dissipating enough heat, and you just have a big buffer, it's just gonna break eventually. These two things, I've never seen anyone use these, I didn't even know these existed before this video. Basically what they'll do is, you reach, you have to recharge them either in a crafting table, with, this is lapis, this is redstone you recharge them with, 
or with an injector, which is a lot less efficient than by hand, but it'll get the job done if you just put an extra reactor and inject lapis or redstone blocks. You can see this has 20,000 durability, this has 100,000, and these instantly dissipate all heat that comes into them. They don't recharge the durability. So if you're putting like 200 heat a tick, which is insane, into these, they will immediately dissipate them, but they will lose durability very fast. So ideally you don't want to rely on durability because that means it's not completely sustainable. These are heat exchangers. They just basically even out the heat between all components around them. They do not interact with these. These are technically like not considered components by vents and exchangers. 12 per heat per second, it'll relocate from, it'll take heat from one that's most under stress and give it to the one that's least under stress, but it can, actually interact with all four at once so it'll it basically just even out the heat it'll give i don't think it ever gives to the reactor but it can take from the reactor and even it out with components around it uh this is the same thing just doubles it i like the vents this only transfers heat with the components not the reactor this is the one i see people using most often it'll do 36 attack with components this one only uses the reactor i've never seen anyone actually use this and it'll transfer to itself only it will not transfer the reactor heat to anything else because it does not transfer to components so it's basically just another buffer which is pretty useless and now we'll talk about the fuel and lastly these neutron reflectors the fuel you can see you see five use a tick four heat a tick this is scales up these are the same however they're a little different we'll talk about that in a second but there's one other thing these basically do and that is you might notice that this takes two fuel rods, you can see two and this is four, but it does not scale like linearly. Should This one should be 10, it should be two fuel rods, but it's not. That is because of, I think this is scaled off real world, neutron reflecting, I'll just take a stack of these. If you have this, it'll generate five U4 heat. If you put another one next to it, and any of these four tiles, it has to be not diagonally, it has to be next to it. It will double like the capacity, the heat and the power of each of these. So. This one will go to 10U and 8 heat. This one will also go to 10U and 8 heat. And I'll put a table on screen exactly how this works. But key thing to remember is that they will not double everything. Only single ones get doubled. These are treated as 5 per actual rod in the thing. So this will go up 20 per reflection. But it will also scale heat. It's a little bit of a complicated formula. You can just extrapolate from the tables that I put on screen. Uh, but the heat will go up more than the EU. Obviously the quad and dual ones already have reflections built in. Now these MOX ones are a little different. I'll explain them more in depth later on. You can skip to that if you want. But basically the more core temperature there is, the more power they generate, which can make them be a lot more efficient than these normal ones. And the last thing is these neutron reflectors. You've probably by this point gathered exactly what they are. If you put this here, put this here, it acts as another cell. It doesn't generate power, but it reflects the neutron. So this will now be acting like there's another cell next to it. See, this has durability as well. This has more durability. This has infinite durability. However, it's really hard to craft. So no one has ever used these, I don't think, ever in the history of this game. So yeah, they're pretty bad. But I will give you guys a demonstration right now how this exactly works. See, if we put one, one heat fan next to this, 24 heat, 12 heat will not will not take all the heat in. It will, but it'll also destroy itself until eventually it'll get destroyed and the core temperature will start going up. However, the 12 times two is 24. That's exactly 24. The core temperature will not go down unless you have a reactor heat vent, even if it's off, which is kind of weird. That's just how it works. And now you can see these should stay at a thousand. This will generate power and it'll sustain itself until this breaks and then you have to replace it. But yeah, the core temperature is not going up either. All is well. That is our basic reactor. This is a fluid reactor. Now this one is very interesting. It's the only other one. Those two are just the basic reactor. This is an actual other design around the reactor. And to build it, basically you just surround it with these blocks in a five by five area like so. You have to make sure the floor is filled in as well. And you have to make sure the ceiling is filled in, all the walls. It's a hollow cube. And you have to put an access hatch. This is how you access it. This is the redstone port. This is where you put the lever. And behind these, there is fluid port. And you can see fluid port. 
you can see in here I have a little design. This is using the overclock defense, the component defense. You see all this. We learned about this, but there's also another two pieces of the GUI, and it's now measured in heat units because that is what we are doing this for. You don't get any actual EU directly from these cells. You get heat, which allows it to be more efficient. And the heat, basically, what it does is it you have to vent it like normal, and then the coolant is transformed into hot coolant which the most common practice to do with is to convert it into steam. Basically what the setup is, these two are making, once we turn it on, you can see 4,000 heat units a second, or 8,000, I mean, and that perfectly converts to enough to have, I believe it is 300 EU a tick, which is pretty good for only this amount of like fuel rods, and you can see reflection here as well. So basically these distributors, they take from there, you see a liquid heat exchanger here, liquid heat exchanger here, filled with heat conductors, and that is facing into this block here to heat it up, and it is using the hot coolant, which is then transformed back into coolant after it like uses the heat, and then it goes back in to these top fuel ports, so it's basically a quick closed loop here, you're never going to need to add more coolant. I think you can get by with adding 1000 coolant here, but I added 10,000 just for you know, vanity. That heats up the steam boiler, which basically you want to set it to 221 if you're trying to make superheated steam, which we are here, or zero if you're trying to make normal steam. No reason to set it to anything else. You want to fill it up. I think, again, you can get by with a thousand distilled water. I'm not quite sure on that one. Just ignore this. It won't matter with distilled water. And you have to use distilled water or else it'll stop working eventually. Just set this to one millibucket a tick. And once this heats up to 374 degrees, it'll start making superheated steam, but it also use up the heat to heat it itself up, obviously. So it won't immediately start producing power. You have to give it some warm up period. And everything on this side is also on the other side. And then it will output this into here. You have to put a steam turbine in the steam turbine. I don't know why. It's just, I guess they want to make it more complicated. And then it'll transform the steam into kinetic units. Basically just envision it as the steam spinning like a spinning a rotor or something. And then you need kinetic generators on the other side facing in to make that kinetic unit into actual electricity. And I just bring this over here into a storage block and then it'll output the steam. If it's already full, this thing will just pass straight over to this one, which will generate less because it doesn't, these two won't be at full capacity. This one will, this one won't because there's not enough steam. These two will be 50 EU a tick. These two will be 100, just 300. And once you get here, this will condense extra steam back into distilled water, and it'll eject that distilled water. You see these also have them. Uh, they're set to face the right side. Uh, you can do this by clicking on a block. See I'm facing north. If you click on a block, it'll go south. I don't know why exactly that is, but just keep that in mind. Shift right click on a block. You can't do it on the air. And it'll go all the way back to the steam boiler. Also a closed loop. Um, the reason we do this is you think maybe, wow, we just want to do it all in here. Why would we ever get into back? Basically, if this does not have a valid output at all times, it will basically kind of blow up. But not it won't destroy anything, but it'll harm you. But it also sounds very it's terrifying because it's an explosion. So we just want to make sure it always has an output to go to, even if it is kind of wasteful. That's how it works. So I'm going to turn this on, wait for it to heat up, and then I'll get back with you guys and see how it does. You can see we're almost there, and now it will start making, oh, it's 375, whoops. Now we'll start making steam. These will start doing their thing. This will start condensing. These will start making their power. Everything does what it's supposed to. This will, you can see, this is how much power we're making. A decent amount. Obviously, there's a lot of free space here. You can make more power, but that is it for this. We're going to move on to mocks. So... MOX is basically the same rules as normal reactor except scales with the temperature. You can see right here 20 EU a tick. That is also what the normal fuel rod makes. Zero core temperature though. And you can see here if we have it at 50% exactly it'll make 60 and it'll go all the way up to 100 at like 99%. I found that out with some uh, yeah some testing over there. But it'll start blowing up stuff not not that big but it'll start blowing up some stuff this will i believe poison you over time if you're too close to it but not for a while but it's just keeping it 
if you value being able to walk around safely, I'd suggest like not 99%, maybe like 50, 60. I haven't exactly tested exactly what the effects are, but yeah. And that's basically it for mocks. There's nothing else to do here. So now let's move on to a farm. <laughs> now this is the best farm I was able to find for plutonium. You're not gonna be using this for long. If you turn it on, you can see we have, it just produces 135, really trash for this big. But you can see these will all decay. Once they decay, you can use them to get plutonium. Now, if we you see depleted, you get one tiny pile of plutonium. But you can see another interesting thing. If you get deplete a mox fuel rod, you'll get three whole plutonium. And that's because mox fuel rods are made of plutonium. So if we look at uses, if you, if you use three of it, Ignore this recipe. I don't know why this is here. This item does not exist. Use three of them plus your normal uranium. You can make one fuel rod, which is also very interesting because three gets one fuel rod. You also get three and one extra plutonium out. So if you, once you have enough plutonium, once you have enough plutonium, you're never going to want to do this again. And that's basically it for all the ways to design your reactor. Uh, I'll try to put some good designs in the description most of them are broken though because this mod is definitely lost a lot of traction in the past few years i still like it though definitely not the greatest but it's uh still pretty good um if you like this video you know subscribe like whatever i don't really do what you want if you didn't like this video be sure to dislike and uh preferably tell me why you didn't and uh yeah expect more more uploads coming soon hopefully to this very tutorial series and see you guys later.